Welcome to the stable area at Arapahoe Park. I'm announcer Jonathan Horowitz, joined by Lauren Gardner of Altitude Sports and Entertainment. Lauren will be covering the Colorado Avalanche for Altitude Sports this coming season. Lauren, it's great to have you on Gates Open at Arapahoe Park. And you've covered horse racing before, and you've covered it in one of the most special settings for horse racing in Kentucky. What was your experience like in what really is horse heaven in Kentucky? Yeah, Jonathan, I think I was a little spoiled. My first ever horse race was the Kentucky Derby. So I went down to Louisville and went over to Churchill Downs and experienced about everything. We went to Thurby and then we covered Oaks Day, which was great. And you know, the theme was all fillies and lilies, right? So all the female horses were racing. And then uh, the Derby itself, and I have to tell you, I have been to Super Bowls and All-Star Games, some really big events, and the Kentucky Derby was by far my favorite event. The Kentucky Derby, it's, it's more than just a race, it's more than just a sporting event. It has history, it has culture, and when you're down here in Arapahoe Park Stable area, it, it has its own economy, lifestyle, culture. It, it really is a, a whole different world down here in the stable area. It's an area that the public doesn't normally get to see, but, but it's great to see a horse here like Lady Gila, who is one of the top horses that's run at Arapahoe Park, just being so calm and she's in her stable. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's, she's, she's talking she's it, it up with, with her friends. The, the culture of horse racing in Kentucky, you've been right at the heart of it. What does the horse mean to the state of Kentucky? It's everything. It's a lifestyle out there, which is really cool because people understand the sport and they respect it and the culture and uh, they, they know the history. You know, we, I worked on a show and we kind of traced the, the life and career of Secretariat, who you know was so popular, arguably one of the greatest athletes of all time. And it was just so cool to see how much people knew about him and you know Ron Turcotte is jockey and just everything that went into it. And we went to Claiborne Farm where he's buried and it's it's sacred for them and it's just it's really cool to see that. Secretariat plays a big part in Colorado as well because his owner Penny Chenery lives in Boulder. But now we're gonna take you from Colorado to Kentucky and visit Keeneland, the Keeneland Library, the Kentucky Horse Park, some of the, the great sites that make Kentucky real horse capital in the United States. From the bustle of Louisville's Churchill Downs on Kentucky Derby Day, to the quiet solitude of Lexington's Keeneland Library where stories of derby winners line the book stacks. Kentucky just eats up horse racing in the same way that the racehorses who are foaled there eat up the bluegrass that has inspired the state's nickname. The origins of derby races, which are for three-year-old horses, can be found on the shelves at the Keeneland Library of British racing calendars from the 1700s. The volume from 1780 contains the program page from the first Derby, named after the 12th Earl of Derby, Edward Stanley, won a coin flip to name the race that he inaugurated for three-year-old horses over an undulating mile and a half on his estate at Epsom Downs in England. 150 years later, the 17th Earl of Derby attended the 1930 Kentucky Derby to experience how big horse racing was becoming in the United States and Kentucky in particular. The Kentucky Derby is the most famous and most watched horse race in the United States. Gallant Fox went on to win the Preakness in Maryland and the Belmont in New York to be recognized as a Triple Crown champion a term popularized that year by sports writer Charles Hatton that refers to the ultimate achievement in horse racing. 107 of 142 Kentucky Derby winners were born in Kentucky. The state with the next most Derby winning foals, Florida with six. Many of horse racing's best pass through the Keeneland sales ring as yearlings and then go on to racing successes around the world. Keeneland graduate undrafted, a modest $50,000 purchase in 2011, won the 2015 Diamond Jubilee at the prestigious and historic Royal Ascot meeting in England. Undrafted emulated his owner, the undrafted former New England Patriots and Denver Broncos wide receiver Wes Welker going from modest beginnings to the top of the sports world. The Keeneland Library preserves horse racing's history with 30,000 publications, 400,000 photographs, and more than 5,000 volumes of the daily racing form containing horse racing statistical charts. And it's not just racing. 
Some of the biggest competitions for sport horses take place at Lexington's Kentucky Horse Park near Keeneland. It's all full circle for the racehorse in Kentucky. From sought after babies, to high class racing, to new careers in other disciplines after they retire. Nighthawk Ranch. Nighthawk Ranch is located in Guffey, Colorado, and we buy Mustangs from the BLM and we train them for use with these kids that are recovering from cancer. It's like a team from day one, the kid and the horse, and, and they feel really comfortable, they feel safe on the horse, they feel a part of the horse, they feel part of the program, and, and it's, it's a bond they don't experience a lot in their lives. So the kids have their own horse for the week learn to ride if they haven't ridden before. We spend a lot of time with animals in the morning and then in the afternoons we have more camping events, such as archery, ropes course, building a log cabin, camping out overnight, a little bit of everything. I have a lot of cancer in my family. I'm a cancer survivor and we believe that Nidoc Ranch has a lot of natural healing on its own. It was a great healing force in my life and we believe that sharing that with these kids, that's important. So clean air, clean food, great experience is all, is all positive for these kids for sure in their healing. The 2016 live horse racing season in Colorado at Arapaho Park from May 20th to August 14th. Racing takes place on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays and special holiday racing on Mondays for Memorial Day and the 4th of July. Post time for the first race each day is at 1 o'clock p.m. For more information, visit myhighracing.com and facebook.com slash Arapaho Racing. Arapaho Park, where horses come first. Lauren will be working with the Colorado Avalanche this year. Jockeys and ice hockey players, what are the athletic skills that, that make for a good jockey, you think? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people see it that way, but you have to be extremely strong and uh, have a lot of athletic ability, I think, in order to jump on top of a, an athlete as well, a, a horse, and just be able to hang on and be able to communicate with them and tell them what you're expecting of them and I think it takes a tremendous amount of core strength and leg strength we were just talking or I think you were talking about it you, you're learning how to ride and you're doing a tremendous job and just putting the stirrups up to the height where jockeys ride like that is excruciating on your legs I mean just I think they're amazing athletes at, at first glance it, it seems like the jockey's sitting on the horse and and the horse is running but the one thing that that I've learned in riding is in order to do nothing, meaning in order to really be one with the horse, it, it takes so much core strength, it takes so much leg strength, it takes so much concentration, and, and so jockeys are, are tremendous athletes. When you were riding horses with barrel racing, what were the athletic skills that you felt you needed to be a successful barrel racer? I think a lot of similar qualities, obviously not quite as intense as being a jockey, but yeah, you had to, your legs had to be really strong in order to hold on and communicate with the horse. That's really how, as you know, you steer your horse, you're, you're talking to them through your body language and the core strength and even your arms. And I, I remember it was nothing when I was younger and then I went riding, uh, I think a couple months ago and I was so sore the next day. So it's, it's amazing. You see how some of these jockeys train as well you know out to the side of the stable and off the track and it's a uh, it's a different regiment in its own you know right but I think it's very similar to what a lot of professional athletes are doing just in terms of having to be in that type of condition the jockeys at Arapahoe Park the horses that they ride can sometimes sense who's on them and and this horse here Lady Gila has a great bond with her rider Mike Ziegler and we have some very good jockeys at Arapaho Park. One in particular, Tracy A. Bear. He has won more than 3,800 races in his career, and he was a leading jockey in Kentucky early on in his career. We caught up with him in the jockey's room about his journey to the top of the jockey ranks in Kentucky and then how he came here to Arapaho Park. I went to Cleveland, Ohio. First year there and uh, was leading rider like three or four meets. Then some, I stayed there about two, three years, and then like 93, somebody told me, said, man, you need to get out of here. I said, well, why go to Kentucky, man? I don't want to 
you know, be with them big guys, Pat Day and all them. Sure. I said, you know, I was a little scared, you know. And I just, I went the turf way for the winter meet. And I was second lead route, I got beat by one. I went back to Cleveland, the meet had opened. I galloped the horse and I didn't like, it was totally different. I mean, once you've been in Kentucky, it's like, you know, it's a dream come true. It's horse heaven, yeah. I got off that horse, I galloped. I never unpacked my, my stuff. I went to my truck, told my wife at the time, I said, I'm leaving, I'm going back to Kentucky. You won some big stakes races at Keeneland. That, that's one of the, the top places to ride. With a furlong to run, the name's Jimmy has the lead. From the inside first and only gains ground. Nearing the wire, it's the name's Jimmy on the inside first and only now puts a head in front. When you get on the back of the horse, what is that feeling like? What, what, what are you looking for in, in the horse to, to know whether or not you'll be successful? Well, I mean, the main thing is just being relaxed and just, you know, just being, having contact with the horse, you know, and just, because horses, you know, they sense a lot. And, and they, I mean, that's how they, that's how they test you, you know, by your senses. You know, just being relaxed and calm and don't panic, don't, you know, when horses leave the gates, you know, I'm, I leave there relaxed. I don't get, you know, I don't get in their mouth because that's when, you, when you're ready to make a run is that's when that you start picking them up, you know. So you want to feel comfortable and you want the horse to feel comfortable as well? As long as I'm comfortable, they'll be comfortable. How do you maintain being so relaxed with all the craziness that takes place in a horse race? I guess just, you know, I've done it for so long. You know, I've been riding since I was 10 years old. I mean, it's just, at a young age, I, was, I had to learn how to handle, you know, pressure. You know, I didn't have a choice. And you know, it's just when you like to do something, it's really, it just comes natural to me. I, you know, I don't, once I'm on top of the horse, I don't get nervous. I'm more nervous off the horse than I am on the horse. We've been around since 1972. We are the voice of the horse industry and what we try to do is be aware of what's going on in the legislature in different developments different municipalities so that we can maintain horses as part of our life and lifestyle we're here to make sure that the powers and the rights of people to own horses remains the same as it has been for many many years horses are extremely important to our heritage it's important to our economy. We're a $1.6 billion industry in the state of Colorado, and there's over 156,000 people involved with our industry. So I think we have a real important role in the economy, but also in the lifestyle and what horses bring to each one of us. Come on board and get involved with us in our Blue Ribbon Partnership Program and show others your passion about the lifestyle and about owning horses. Lauren Gardner, Jonathan Horowitz with Lady Gila in barn number 10 in Arapahoe Park stable area. Lady Gila is nine years old. That's relatively old for a racehorse, but she's still very successful, has won the Columbine Stakes at Arapahoe Park four times. But usually at this age, racehorses are starting new careers. And Lauren, you've had some off the track horses. What's your riding background? And, and what was it like to, to ride a former racehorse and the transition that they made? into what you did with horses. At times it was like sitting on a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> There's some, once a racehorse, always a racehorse exactly. sometimes. I grew up riding quarter horses and uh, we had an appendix horse as well, which means that's a cross quarter and thoroughbred. And a couple of those horses were off the track and uh, you could definitely tell they, they got excited when they were uh, in competitive situation so we would barrel race and you know that's it's pretty intense but it's kind of similar to racing because you you're going for it you're running as hard as you can and it was always interesting because there were different characteristics I think that these horses would have they're just competitive they want to be out there competing and running and um, they're fiery they're a handful at times so when I say like a rocket yeah you're sitting on it one minute it's fine and then the next they're going well professional athletes can become commentators or take up golf but but these racehorses, they can do all kinds of amazing things. And we're following the journey of one racehorse from Arapahoe Park, 
Cowboys rule. He raced here from 2011 to 2016, and this year he's going to be competing in the Retired Racehorse Project's Thoroughbred Makeover at the Kentucky Horse Park. So from Arapahoe Park to the Kentucky Horse Park, let's show you the transformation of Cowboys rule. This big friendly equine giant, standing a very tall 17 two hands, was more than just a racehorse. He was the family pet for the Jensen family, trainer Mark Jensen, and he would give rides to the grandkids Colton and Caden. Well, he was nice and he was my horse. He's with Cantor Colorado now, an organization that retrains retired racehorses. And we're here at By The Way Farms in Franktown with Cowboys Rule and his new family, Ashley Gubich and her son Chase. And they're part of Cowboys Rule's retraining. And Cowboys Rule, well, he's still a big friendly giant and he's still a kid's horse as he's giving a ride right now to his real trainer, Chase. But let's ask Ashley, Ashley, as a sport horse, he can go on to be a jumper, do dressage, eventing. What about him makes you think he'll be a good sport horse? And, and what qualities as a sport horse do you think he'll excel at? Um, he is an absolutely beautiful mover. He has really, really great bone. He held up really well on the track and came uh, out with clean x-rays and racing as many times as he did and as big as he is, that really proves to the quality of the horse that we have. I'm hoping to transition him into an eventer because he has a great brain and is very, very willing. And we're currently entered uh, in the Retired Racehorse Makeover Project um, in eventing. So hopefully he takes to that well, uh, and that's in October. So we have a couple months to see if uh, that will work out or not. Well, let's now let Ashley get on the horse and see what Cowboys Rule can do now that he's retired as a racehorse. Good boy. What's going on, huh? We'll start. <laughs> and just go over some rails and give him something to think about. Good boy. Nothing in racing makes them go over anything. So that's a challenge in itself. He has a very, very nice canter. All right, we're going to try our huge first uh, vertical here and what that may be a foot 16 inches but it's not about the height like I said it's really about the understanding and confidence good boy and cowboys rule to the victory of double oh my goodness oh are you ready to do the jump Jonathan Horowitz with Lauren Gardner, Arapahoe Park, Churchill Downs. There are derby parties around the country. The, the derby phenomenon, some people don't even do it for the race. They're, they're doing it for so much more. What does the Kentucky Derby represent beyond just racing? It's a, it's an event and it's kind of a, it's a social scene more than anything. So they have on Oaks Day, which is the day prior, they have a fashion contest and a fashion show and everyone just has these elaborate hats and outfits and um, you kind of just dress to the nines. And so a lot of people, yeah, you may not know anything or really care about racing, but it's just, it's something to be a part of. It's definitely, I, I think, probably the epitome of like a social event to attend in your lifetime. And one of the components of, of being at the races that adds to the atmosphere is what I do as the announcer. But when you were at Keeneland Racecourse, up until 1997, there was actually no announcer at Keeneland. 
so wow. the announcing has become sort of synonymous with the atmosphere at the races, but that wasn't always the case. With the horse race announcer, you're hearing a running commentary during the, uh, the, the, the race. Have you ever thought about announcing a horse race before? I would love to try. I don't think I could even come close to what you do, but yeah, if you could give me some pointers, count me in, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, let's have you call okay. a race, but right now let's go to Kentucky and, and we're gonna start out in silence with the history of horse race announcing, and then we'll raise the volume meeting the announcer at Keeneland and, and some historic announcers like Clem McCarthy as well. There, uh, and it's a perfect start. Clem McCarthy was the first American voice associated with horse racing. He was the first announcer over a track public address system at Arlington Park in Illinois and Bowie Race Track in Maryland in 1927. McCarthy began broadcasting the Kentucky Derby in 1928 when he stepped in for the original announcer, who had punctuated his first call of the day by saying, you son of a, after the horse he bet on lost. McCarthy announced the Kentucky Derby until the victory by Count Turf in 1951. Count Turf, you can put a ring around his name. In between, he delivered some of horse racing's most memorable calls, such as the 1938 match race where the rags to riches Seabiscuit upset Triple Crown champion War Admiral and gave hope to a nation in the throes of the Great Depression. They're head and head, and both suckies driving. It's the best horse from here in. They've got 200 yards to come. It's horse against horse. Both of them driving. Seabiscuit leads by a length. Now Seabiscuit by a length and a half. Wolf has put away his whip. Seabiscuit by three. And they're off. But about 75 miles east of Louisville's Churchill Downs, Lexington's Keeneland race course used to run its races in silence. Kurt Becker became Keeneland's first announcer in 1997. 60 years Keeneland existed without a public address system. The idea was when they built the track in 1936, they said it was racing as it was meant to be. They said racing was not meant to have an announcer. So as a result, it took a while for uh, Keeneland to decide to come to that point. But as we moved into the simulcast era in the 1990s, they decided it would be a good idea to have a track caller. So by the spring of 97, the system was up and running, and, and I was here, and here we are. Unlike at other sporting events, the racetrack public address announcer gives a running commentary during the race. Announcers watch from binoculars in a booth high above the finish line. Their voice adds to the atmosphere at a day at the races and has become inextricably linked with some of horse racing's most famous moments. Most people can quote that to me, quote that call. He's moving now like a tremendous machine. From the Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs to the horse races at Arapahoe Park, Lauren, for someone who comes out to the horse races for the first time, what would you recommend as far as being able to take it all in and, and really be one with the racing experience? Come early so you can walk around and just get a feel for the place. Bet you want to have a vested interest in each one of the races. And something that somebody described to me when I was at Churchill Downs and just kind of explained it, and it, it just... It put it into the perfect terms is that you can go to another sporting event, a baseball game, and sit there for three hours, and you can miss the best play of the game. This is guaranteed excitement. You know exactly when the race is going to take place. They don't take that long, but have a vested interest. Bet, walk around, take it in, get dressed up. Just have a good time. Immerse yourself in the experience. That's a great way to put it because I think horse racing is so interactive. If you go to a, a baseball, basketball, hockey, football game, you're going to pretty much be in one seat for the entire contest. Mm -hmm. But at the horse races, you can get a table in the clubhouse. You can go to the window and make your bet. You can go down to the paddock and see the horses being saddled. You can watch a race by the finish line. I also invite people to come up to the announcer's booth, see the expansiveness oh, cool. of the of the racetrack. So it's very interactive. It's been great to have you come out to Arapahoe Park, and, and we hope that you'll come out to Arapahoe Park maybe to, to take us up on calling a race. I'm in. Thank you so much for having me out here. This is amazing, and getting to come and see the stables and go behind the scenes and get to hang out with Jill here. She's amazing. It's just, it's a 
very unique opportunity and I, I really encourage everyone just come on down check it out go to the paddocks these are incredible animals well we'll see you at the races racing at Arapahoe Park taking place on Fridays Saturdays and Sundays in 2016 until closing day on August 14th for Lauren Gardner I'm Jonathan Horowitz until your next time out at the races keep picking winners